you have your Bibles, and I hope that you do, turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. We're going to be looking at verses 14 through 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. Sermon that I have entitled, Guiding Light. Guiding Light. Matthew chapter 5, 14 through 16. Now Jesus says in, in this section of his sermon on the mount that you are the salt of the earth and that you are the light of the world. Now I said this last week, I'll say that again this week, that Jesus never challenges us to become salt or to become light. He simply said that you are the salt of the earth, that you are the light of the world. So last week we looked at what it meant to be the salt of the earth. This morning we want to see what it means to be the light of the world. So follow along with me as I read Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. If you have it, say amen. All right, let's read what Jesus has to say. He says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your um, amazing, holy calling upon our life. Without a doubt, if you live within us, if we are born again, we have a mission. God, we have a task. We have a job to do. We are the light of the world. God, I pray, Lord, that we know that. Lord, that we not only know it, but that we do that, what you've called us to do. God, may your light shine through us in such an awesome way that guides people to you. So, God, I pray that as we teach and preach your word, Lord, that you will convict our hearts Lord, of the things that we fall short in. God, may you draw us closer to you. May you be glorified, Lord, through uh, this time together. May you be glorified through our lives. We thank you and we praise you. Lord, I pray that you'll uh, use my list for your service. Hide me behind the cross this morning, that you and you alone be exalted. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Now, in verses 14 and 15, Jesus doesn't necessarily teach us anything new about light. Just like with salt, I didn't teach you anything you didn't already know about salt. So we already know a lot about light. The children, I think, showed us this morning um, all that we really can know about light. You already know that light replaces darkness. The only way to remove darkness um, is to shine light where darkness is. As I said with the children, darkness is weaker than light and will always be removed with light. Now you also know, and the kids knew, that the light or light reveals things, right? Now we talked about the kids in the room and how light helps them not step on toys and things like that. Surely, surely no one here has ever done this, at least not on purpose anyways. Try to drive at night with your headlights off. Anybody ever done that before? You got a few other, yeah, on purpose? Thank you, Tommy and Dick, for being honest. I have too. You know, I don't know if it's one of those manly things. See, now you guys can come and be honest because I've tried that driving down the road that I grew up on. I'm like, I know this road. Let's see how well I know this road. Turn my lights off. I don't know the road that well. Um, don't try that at home. See, the headlights on your car serve a very good purpose, right? They serve the purpose to reveal things like the road and things that may be on the road, like deer, because deer like to be on the road at night. And so it reveals those things. also reveals the things that are on the side of the road that could possibly end up on the road. So it's good to have your headlights on. So lights reveal things. Lights uh, replace darkness, okay? Now, we can relate that to our Christian life, right? And how Jesus is light and how he replaces the darkness that is in our life and he reveals sin in our life. We don't always like that, but um, that's what he does. And that's a very good message. But I think Jesus wants us and is trying to get across to us 
to make it a little more personal. And I think we see that in verse 16. So let's look at verse 16, spend some little, a little bit of time here this morning. He says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So in verses 14 and 15, Jesus reiterates what we already know about light, right? Light's not meant to be hidden. You don't put a basket over it, but you put it on a lampstand and you kind of place it up in the air. You raise it up. I think we see that. I think we get that. But in verse 16, he makes it personal. We know that Jesus makes it personal because we see the word your three times. And I want you to underline where we see that. It says, your light, right? Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And so Jesus is saying, look, you are the light of the world. Now, I want you to shine your light into the world so that they see your good works and glorify your Father. So I want to spend some time here this morning and expound about what Jesus is talking about here. Now we can get really deep here, and I'm not going to this morning. I want to keep it fairly simple. And so what I want to do is I want to give you several types of light, and I want you to figure out what type of light you are. So what type of light are you? I'll give you several types. You figure out which one you are. I want to start with the type of light that Jesus has called us to be, and we see in verse 16. All right? So what has Jesus called us to be? What kind of light has Jesus called us to be? He has called us to be a guiding light. Jesus has called us to be a guiding light. Now, a guiding light is a light that shines in such a way that it directs or guides a person to something else. Okay? A guiding light is a light that shines in such a way or directs or guides a person to something else. A good example of a guiding light is a lighthouse. Okay? A lighthouse is not to bring attention to itself, but it's to guide the ships that are at the sea to the land, right? So verse 16 best describes a guiding light. Now I want to paraphrase just a little bit here uh, on verse 16 to so you get an idea of what Jesus is talking about here. And this is basically what he's saying. He's saying, shine your light in such a way that when people see what you do, when people see who you are, when people see how you live, that they see Jesus and glorify God. That's what Jesus is saying. So when people look at you, what you do, how you live, that they glorify God as a result of it. And so Jesus is calling us to shine our light in such a way that when people look at us, who we are, what we do, then they know it's God, right? So I want people, when they look at you, they're like, well, I knew that guy or that lady when they were teenagers. And I see how they are now. God is at work in that life. God is at work because I know that ain't them, right? And I know that that's probably, uh, hopefully that's what people say uh, about me preaching. When I was younger, when I was a kid, I was shying backwards, but yet here God has called me uh, to do this. But I also know a lady who at 36 or 37 years old, I can't remember exactly how old she was, but at 36 or 37 years old, she was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer and was told that she had at the most two years to live. Five years later, she was diagnosed with brain cancer. One year after that, she was diagnosed with cervical cancer. And the entire time, every week, sitting about five or six pews back on the left side of the church, showed up praising God, giving God glory every single Sunday. Nine years removed. From her first diagnosis, she still sits on a pew, and I'm sure she's there this morning, praising God and giving Him the glory. When you look at her, you see the light of Jesus Christ. And you don't say, well, she's awesome. You say, well, God is awesome. See, that's what a guiding light is. When you look at her, you can't help but to glorify God in heaven. You can't help it. She truly has a guiding light that points others to Christ. 
Do people see your good works, who you are, what you do, and glorify God? Do people see what you do, who you are, your good works, and glorify God? If not, then you're not a guiding light. If not, you're not a guiding light. A guiding light is a person who shines in such a way that when people see them, when people see their good works, that they glorify God. They say, wow, there's so-and-so. Isn't God good? And so they glorify God when they see you or your good works. The church and our nation are in desperate need of more guiding lights. We need more guiding lights in the church. We especially need more guiding lights in our nation. Another type of light. See, we're called to be guiding lights. If you realize you're not a guiding light, then you probably fall in one of these other categories. Another type of light that you may be um, is a spotlight. A spotlight. Now, a spotlight is a light that is used to draw attention to a certain person. In this case, themselves. So maybe you're a spotlight. I think the church has its fair share of spotlights. I, mean, I know you've seen plays and dramas and things like that, and uh, it's kind of dark behind the scenes, but yeah, there's a spotlight lighting up one certain person. You know what I'm talking about, I'm sure. Well, there are Christians who do good works just so that they can be glorified. There are Christians who do good works, good deeds, so that they are glorified. Now, Jesus says, let them see your good works and glorify your Father. That's what, that's what God says, not you, right? He doesn't want you to be glorified. It's not about us being glorified. If you have to go around telling people what you do and how awesome you are, um, then you're probably a spotlight. And there are people sitting in pews in churches who are that. They have to go around telling people how good they are, how awesome they are, so that they get a little bit of attention from somebody. See, Jesus does not say, tell people of your good works. He didn't say that. He didn't say, tell people of your good works so that they'll glorify you. No, he says, let them see your good works. Church, they're already examining your life. You're examining others' life. People are examining your life. Guess what? They've already been on your Facebook. All right? They know who you are. They know they're watching. You don't have to tell people who you are. You don't have to tell people what you do. They already know. They're already watching. They're already seeing. They're already creeping on your Facebooks and your social media accounts. See, Jesus says, let them see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You don't have to go around telling them. You don't have to let people know what you're doing. They already know what you're doing. Okay? You're, you, you do what you're supposed to do. You live how you're supposed to live. And the light of Jesus Christ will shine through you. And people will see it. You don't have to tell nobody. You don't have to shine a spotlight on yourself. That's the key to this. You don't have to tell people of your good works. Because it will be evident. And God will be glorified. You just do what you're supposed to do. You just do what you're called to do. And people will see it. And God will be glorified and not you. Maybe you've realized this morning, well, you know what, I'm not really guiding light. And you know what, I'm not really a spotlight. I don't really want any attention. I don't go around telling people what I do. So where am I? Where do I fit in? Maybe you're this last light. Maybe you're this last light. One more type of light. And that's a flashlight. Maybe you're a flashlight. Think about what a flashlight is. A flashlight is only used when there's only or when there's no other light around. A flashlight is only used when there's no other light around. I'd venture to say that most Christians, stepping out on a limb here, all right, but I believe it's a pretty strong limb. I would venture to say that most Christians in church today are flashlights. A flashlight is only used as a last resort. I told you guys a couple of weeks ago that you're not going to like what I say during this sermon series. And if you don't like what I say, what I tell you, I said, um, repent, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there. Flashlights are always good to have just in case power goes out at night, right? Always good to have when there's no other source of light. But Jesus does not call us to be flashlights, church. 
He does not call us to be flashlights. Jesus didn't say, if no one else steps up, or if no one's there to be the light, if there's no other light, then you be the light. That's not what Jesus said. That's not what he said. As a pastor, you know how many times I have heard, Pastor, if no one else would do it, then I'll do it. And by it, I mean good works. God, Pastor, if there's no one else who'll step up and fill that role that is so desperately needed in church, uh, well, then I'll do it, Pastor. I'll, I'll do it no one else. In other words, you're a flashlight. You're only going to be the light when nobody else steps up to be the light. When there's no other source of light, you're willing to be the light then. So you just stay tucked away in the drawer until there's no one else to do it. Church is full of flashlights. Step out on this maybe a little weaker limb here. I'm going to say about 70% of our church is flashlights. We're so comfortable, church, with someone else doing things. We're so comfortable with someone else doing the good works that in all reality, nothing gets done. Because we're waiting. Or some people say, I'm letting someone else do it. Church, listen to me, okay? In all seriousness, listen to me. We have a whole community who needs Jesus. We have a whole community who needs Jesus. And Jesus says, you are the light. Not a flashlight, but he wants you to be a guiding light. But if you stay in the drawer until all the other lights are out, then they'll not be reached. They'll not be reached. Yeah, you may have your spot in heaven. You may have your mansion in heaven. But what about those who are in our community? What about those who are lost without Christ? How will they hear? How will they know if you're waiting for someone else or letting someone else do it? It's time to quit being a flashlight. It's time to quit being a spotlight. And it's time to start being a guiding light so people will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. It's time to quit. It's time to quit making excuses. It's time to quit uh, waiting on someone else. It's, quite, it's time to quit being all about you. And it's time to be a guiding light. Get out there. Do what you know to do. Do what God's called you to do. Just as I said earlier, we all have a holy calling. If you're born again, you have a mission it's time to do what God's called you to do. Be that light, that guiding light that points to Jesus, that points others to Jesus. I don't want you to raise your hand, but I want you to answer honestly. Who wants to see people saved? I mean, we, we, if, you, if you're a believer, you ought to want to pe see people saved. Then it starts with you being a guiding light. It starts with you being a guiding light. I'm going to have Travis and the musicians to come on up as I close this sermon out. If you have never been saved, if you've never given your life to Christ, then you're just a light bulb on the shelf in the store. Okay? If you've never been saved, never given your life to Christ, then you're just a light bulb on the shelf packaged up in the store. The only way for a light bulb to shine is for it to be bought and power added to it. To be bought and power added to it. So I want you to know today, if you're lost, that Jesus paid a price for you. He laid down his life. If you'll just accept him by faith, just accept him by faith, then he'll come into your life, empower you with the Holy Spirit, and you'll become more than just a light bulb on the shelf at Walmart. You'll become the light of the world. You'll become the light of the world. So church, I challenged you this morning. I have challenged you to be a guiding light. And now I want you to seek God and ask Him, how can I be a guiding light? I'm tired of being a flashlight. I want to be a guiding light. I want to do good works so that when people see those good works, that they glorify you.